which ones we, uh, your affiliation is called? First, Philippine Red Cross. Hey, okay, thank you for coming, ma'am. Uh, Aldis Corporation. Thank you, Sir Julius. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, or UNOCHA. Thank you, sir. National Power Corporation. Thank you, sirs. Uh, Department of Agriculture, or DA. Okay, thank you. Uh, the Philippine Association of Water District, PAUDI. The Philippine Air Force. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Phil, uh, Philippine Fiber Industries Development Authority, or PhilFIDA. Thank you, sir. National Mango Action Team. Thank you, sir, Rola. The San Miguel Food Industries Agri Division. Uh, thank you, sir. National Irrigation Administration. Thank you, sir. Uh, Bureau of Soils and Water Management. Thank you. Land Bank of the Philippines. Uh, thank you, ma'am. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources, DNR. Uh, also, EMB of DNR. Ay, dano ba ba yun? Ah, magkasama po. Head Corps of Boites. Okay, thank you, sir. The Philippine Sugar Millers Association. Thank you, sir. Uh, and of course, uh, wala na bang na-miss na hindi natawag? And of course, our pag-asa uh, colleagues. Wala po tayong executive staff dito. So thank you for coming, sirs and ma'ams. Okay. And of course pala, once again, would like to, nasabi na rin ni Ma'am Edna, to acknowledge our sponsor for this uh, 97 forum. Medyo bongga tayo ng last and ngayon forum dahil po sa kanila, the World Food Program. So, lapakan po natin in the presence of Miss Joanne. Okay, so now we will go to our uh, lecture. So first, to give the update on weather, ano bang meron tayo ngayon, we'd like to call Mr. Robert uh, Badrina, our weather forecaster from the Weather Division. Salamat po, Ma'am Lucy. Ma'am Lucy, at salamat po sa pag-invite sa amin dito tsaka sa World Food Program sa pagpapakain sa amin mamaya. <laughs> anyway, so I'm uh, Robert Badrina. Pag sa radyo po, Obet. Pag sa TV, Obet din. So, ito po yung ating update sa ating lagay ng panahon. So, from Weather Division. Sa ngayon, no, tatlong weather systems yung nakaka sa ating bansa. We have this Northeast Monsoon, particular na dito sa may bahagi ng Northern Luzon. Makikita ko nito yung Northern Luzon, medyo Halos uh, okay yung panahon sa kanila. Tapos yung tailed ng cold front, nakikita nyo po dito, ito yung pagkoconverge din ng hangin. Uh, kaya po medyo maulan ngayon sa Bicol. At higit sa lahat, yung binabantayan natin ngayon, yung tropical depression na Orduha, ito ho siya. Nandito siya ngayon, nasa may uh, eastern part ng uh, Surigao City. So tingnan ho natin yung magiging track ng bagyong si Orduha. So, so ngayon, pinakamaganda o maganda yung panahon ngayon dito sa may bahagi ng Ilocos at ilang parts ng Mindanao. But generally for Visayas and Bicol region, we're expecting continuous uh, scattered rain showers, continuous light to moderate up to occasional heavy rains. Tingnan po natin yung ating latest track. This is as of 5 p.m. track ng bagyong Orduha. Makikita ho natin yung latest track ng Bagyong Ordua. So, yung mga kababayan natin dito sa may bahagi ng Visayas, Bicol Region, at saka Southern Luzon, expect ho in the coming five days magiging maulan ho sapagkat yung latest na track natin, ito po yung as of 5 p.m. 5 a.m. data natin, posible pong tumama sa kalupaan ng ating bansa itong Bagyong Ordua. Particular na dito sa may bahagi ng uh, either Bicol Region, pero nakikita rin namin yung possibility na either bumaba pa ito ng track, pwedeng bahagi ng Samar or northern part ng Leyte. So titingnan ho natin yung pagkilos niya. Uh, sa ngayon, wala pa tayong nakataas sa tropical cyclone warning signal. So, tingnan, ipapakita ko sa inyo yung ating latest na model. Makikita nyo dito sa ating, uh, mula sa ating uh, model, 
uh, pinapakita ko yung next three days, makikita ito ho yung bagyong uh, orduha at makikita ho ninyo magiging maulan ho in the next at least three days. No? Sa kagaya po ng binanggit ko, Visayas, uh, Bicol Region, tsaka Southern Luzon. Makapansin nyo po ito, uh, ito po yung tail end ng cold front. Before we are looking on the scenario na magre-recurve siya, kasi itong tail end ng cold front, posibleng kunin yung... Um, itong uh, ating bagyo, no? pwede niyang parang pick up in. But the problem is, yung latest nating update, makikita nyo napuputol ho yung tail end ng cold front. At kapag natuluyang naputol ito, kumbaga bumitaw siya, pag binitawan, maiiwanan ito ngayon, hindi siya makakasama dito. So dahil doon, ang um, mas nakikita nating possible scenario is at scenario ng landfall. No? Although, kahit ano, pwede pa rin naman mangyari. But ito po yung mas tinitingnan nating senaryo sa kasalukuyan. And siguro po, mapapansin nyo, may umiikot na naman dito. So, possible po no, na baka after this, at kagaya, po ng, uh, kagaya po ng pinakita ng ating climatology last month, one or two, or one, and one to two. At mukhang totoo, ito, nakikita natin yung one, tas yung two. No? So, by next week po, may posibleng meron na namang sumunod na na bagyo no so baka maulan na naman yung ating uh, Pasko no so babantayan natin pero wag muna natin siya tingnan ito muna tingnan natin itong bagyong Orduha so ito po yung expect natin na coming days itong Bicol region eastern uh, Visayas particularly eastern Visayas and southern Luzon magiging maulan na coming days Okay, so ito na po yung what we're going to expect. Within the day, within the next 24 hours possible na itong bagyong Orduha ay maging tropical storm and also the possible then based on our latest analysis that within the day we're going to raise the tropical second warning signal number one in eastern visayas so automatic po pag signal number one tayo walang pasok yung daycare yung naging tinatanong sa atin no and then possible landfall so titingnan po natin yung possibility of landfall although again like what i've shown you kanina itong tailed ng cold front kapag lumakas po ito or ano pwede niya pang pick up and so may chance pa rin na lumiko siya pero mas malaking chance na hindi no so ayun um, okay if ever po hindi liliko yung bagyo we're looking at the possibility of landfall of Ordua on Friday evening nako Friday evening ano pa naman natin yon christmas party <laughs> and then or saturday morning no december 16 ng umaga no and ito po yung mga lugar na tinitingnan natin na possible na landfall eastern visayas or bicol region no um uh, Then, what to expect then? Uh, cloudy skies with scattered to widespread rain showers over southern Luzon and Visayas. Like what I've told you mula ho kanina, Visayas and southern Luzon would be very wet, no? medyo maulan po in the coming days. While light rains, like what uh, we're experiencing here in Metro Manila, we can continue to expect light rains and cloudy, cloudy skies with light rains in Metro Manila, in Central Luzon, Cagayan Valley, and Cordillera. This is due to the northeast monsoon. So, umiiral pa rin pong northeast monsoon. While if you want a uh, better weather, you can go to Ilocos, Ilocos region, they have isolated light rains, or some parts in Mindanao, mga thunderstorms. And lastly, we have um, uh, gale warning po, no? So, gale warning, ito po yung ating uh, babala sa malalakas na alon. So, seaboards po ng northern and eastern Luzon. So, itong bahagi ng uh, Batanes area, tapos Cagayan Valley, hanggang Bicol region, hanggang eastern Visayas and Caraga. So, halos eastern part po ng bansa natin may nakatas na gale warning at pag meron po tayong gale warning, pinapayuhan natin ito mga kababayan, lalo na yung malita sa kayong pandagat na wag mo nang pumalaot, especially the small bankas. Yun po yung mga uh, hindi natin pinap uh, pinapayuhan na wag mo nang umalis dahil po magiging maalon hanggang sa napakaalon ng karagatan. This is due to the tropical depression, Urdua, and northeast monsoon. And thank you. So we're encouraging you to like our Facebook and Twitter at DOSC underscore Pagasa or mga videos po, puro mga mukha ho namin yan. DOSC dash Pagasa weather report. Or if you want more updates, you can visit our website www.pagasa.dosc.gov.ph. Thank you po. Thank you, Obet. So i-acknowledge pala natin yung Banko Central ng Pilipinas. Uh, thank you, sir. Okay, so sa ngayon pa lang, pwede na natin paghandaan yung sinabi ni Sir Obet na yung bagyo sa ngayon, si Orduha, at mayroon pang isa. So tamang-tama, nandito yung ating mga sa involved sa disaster, yung UN OCHA, Philippine Red Cross, at yung iba pang mga agencies na involved sa disaster, risk and reduction management. Okay, so to give the update on the status of the dams, we would like to call Mr. Richard Orindain, our hydrologist from the Hydromet Division.
Thank you and uh, good morning po sa inyo lahat at uh, advance Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, thank you for coming pala. Updates tayo sa mga situation ng dams natin dito sa Luzon. Kaninang alas 6 ng umaga, ito po yung mga current uh, elevation niya. Ang gut dam is 210.43. And uh, medyo malapit na po ito sa normal high water level which is uh, 212. Itinaas na po natin ang uh, normal high water level from 210 meters. Ginawa na po natin 212. Ito po yung preparation natin para sa dry season. And for Ipodam, 101.03, although medyo mataas siya sa normal high water level, which is 101. Uh, 3 centimeter lang po yung it, uh, taas niya. And pwede po niyang isupply dito sa Lamesa Dam. Wherein Lamesa Dam is 78.69 meters ang elevation niya sa ngayon. And uh, ang Buklao, 749.18 meters, uh, medyo malayo-layo ng konti pa dito sa normal high water level niya, which is 752. And uh, being a dam is 572.6. San Roque dam is 273.49. Uh, Pantabangan is 206.1. And then Magat dam is 187.07 meters. Dito sa Angat Dam, medyo delikado nga ito dahil nga uh, elevation niya is 210.43 and 1.57 meters abot na po ito ng normal high water level which is yung spilling level natin. And kung titingnan natin, for 15 days, kailangan niya na lang ng 267 millimeters of rainfall or isang event lang po. Isang bagsaka ng ulan na 78 millimeters of rainfall, puno po ito si Angat, aabot po ito ng 212 meters, yung elevation niya. So ito po yung pinapa, pinangangambahan natin sa ngayon dahil nga malapit na po itong mapuno, itong si Angat Dam. Which is, uh, ganun din, uh, third week, last year, nag-release po tayo dito sa Angat Dam. Hanggang Pasko na po yun or hanggang New Year. Pinaabot pa natin ng 215, 215 meters, sir. Ano, pinaabot natin. Okay. And the same with Magat Dam. Kung titingnan natin, for 15 meters, uh, 15 days na ulan, tuloy-tuloy na ulan, and the, ang total niya is 130 millimeters of rainfall, or isang event lang, 56 millimeters of rainfall, Aabot po ito sa 193 meters, which is spilling level. Ito po si Magat Dam. Pag na-enhance po nitong bagyo, itong northeast monsoon natin, mabilis po itong uh, mapuno, itong Magat Dam, once na nagkaulan po uh, within the watershed ng Magat Dam. So, ito po ang iniingatan natin. Uh, binabantayan natin dalawa, Angat Dam and uh, Magat Dam. Pero isunod na rin natin ang San Roque. Although medyo malayo-layo pa ang San Roque, which is 6.51 pa ang kailangan para mapuno itong uh, San Roque Dam. And uh, kailangan niya pa rin ng at least 570 millimeters of rainfall or one single event na 249 millimeters of rainfall. Isang ulanan po ito. So isang bagyo kung tatapat dito sa San Roque Dam, saka lang po ito mapupuno. And uh, yung pantabangan po, medyo malayong-malayo pa po sa spilling level, which is, kailangan niya is 1,425 millimeters of rainfall. So napakalayo pa po ng uh, pantabangan. Very safe pa po. So titingnan natin yung trend ng uh, Angat Dam. So dito na tayo sa dulo. The same year, umabot po si Angat Dam ng spilling level uh, a week before December 1, umabot po siya ng spilling level. Hindi po tayo nagpakawala ng tubig dahil ililipat na po natin from 210 meters na elevation na normal high water level, inangat na po natin ng December 1 by 212 meters. So hindi na po natin kailangan mag-release pa ng tubig. So kung makikita nyo po sa trend niya, umangat po siya bigla. Tapos dito po sa dulo, umangat din siya. And seven days na lang po, ililipat na po natin from 210 to 212. So, hindi na po kailangan magpakawala pa. 
So sa San Roque naman po, uh, napakababa nga ng uh, elevation compared doon sa apat na taon na uh, hydrograph niya. So ito po yung pinakamababang elevation sa ngayon. Sa five year na hydrograph natin, this year ang pinakamababa dahil nga nagkaroon ng maintenance dito po sa bandang summer. Tama po sir, ano? nagkaroon po tang, ng maintenance dito. Pinababa ng gusto itong elevation ng San Roque Dam. Kaya makikita natin masyadong mababa pagdating ng December. And for Pantabangan Dam, ganun din po, uh, kulang pa rin yung mga pagulan within the watershed ng Magat Dam. Uh, uh, Pantabangan Dam, I should say, na hindi man lang siya umaabot sa rule curve, which is yung blue line, napakababa niya sa rule curve sa ngayon. Kaya medyo hindi normal yung uh, yung uh, trabaho nito ng uh, si Pantabangan Dam. And with Magat Dam, bigla po siyang uh, bumulusok pa. Ay, sorry. Bigla po siyang uh, bumulusok pa baba dahil nga po sa ngayon na uh, planting season and nagsusupply sila ng uh, for irrigation sa ngayon and uh, minaximize nila yung uh, pagsupply para sa irrigation kaya po biglang bumaba and kukunti lang po yung mga pagulan within the watershed ng Magat Dam. But then uh, eto nga, pag na-enhance ng yung southwest, ah yung northeast monsoon pag na-enhance nito ni Orduha, yun po ang kinatatakutan natin. Baga bigla pong umangat ito dahil nga po pag na-enhance yung northeast monsoon magkakaroon po ng mga pagulan within the watershed ng Magat Dam. So yung assessment level natin uh, for uh, December 31, for Angat Dam, uh, based in uh, rainfall forecast natin from Klimps, Angat Dam is 180 millimeters for 15 days lang po ito. Ano? Dinistribute namin yung total uh, forecast rainfall for December. And uh, for 15 days lang po is 180 millimeters of rainfall yung forecast niya. And uh, estimated dam allocation is 80 cubic meter per second. Ang magiging result po ng elevation ng Angat Dam for December 31 is above normal high water level. So ibig po sabihin ito, uh, from December 15 hanggang 31, pipwede po tayo mag-release. Uh, sa ganong uh, uh, panahon. And uh, for San Roque Dam, bagya po siyang tataas ng 278 based doon sa uh, forecast natin na 63 millimeters of rainfall. And with Pantabangan Dam, bagya rin siyang bababa kasi ang elevation niya ngayon is 205.61 and uh, sa ngayon is... Uh, By December 31 is 205, and with Magat Dam, uh, forecast rainfall niya is 112 millimeter, millimeters, and the uh, magiging result niya by December 31 is above normal high water level, which is yung spe uh, spilling level. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Richard, for the update on the dams. So, sa ngayon, <laughs> gusto ko nang tawagin si Miss Jory Bell Masalio, <laughs> si Bell, our climatologist from the Klimps Cl pala. So, Bell. Thank you, Rose. So, nagpalit po kami ngayon ng role ni Rosie. Um, Nakaschedule po ako to uh, give the climate review for this month. So, kung mapansin niyo po, from January, so ngayon po yung schedule ko, December. And uh, next year po, we will have uh, fresh faces na magbibigay sa inyo ng aming mga uh, review. Okay, so today, uh, re-reviewin po natin yung uh, November up to kahapon po, 12 December 2017. So, fresh na fresh po ang ating review. And uh, our last forum po, nung November 22, so hindi pa po buo yun. So now po yung whole month of uh, November. Okay, so the contents, yung past and so condition po natin, 
kung nag-issue po ba kami ng advisory, dapat po nakita na natin sa aming website. And then, uh, of course, yung mga weather systems that affected the country during uh, the period uh, in review. And of course, our climate assessment, including the rainfall, temperature, and TCs. And of course, the summary. Okay, so sasabihin niyo po bakit ba namin laging pinapakita itong mga ganitong animation. Of course, dito po natin makikita kung meron po ba tayong uh, um, anomaly in heating and cooling ng sea surface temperature ng ating tropical Pacific Ocean. So for the past, uh, since September po, makikita po natin yung ating animation. So ito po, uh, ito po yung temperature. Uh, kung mapapansin po natin, uh, getting bluer as a... Uh, sa mas madali pong uh, pag-iisplika. So, kung titingnan po natin yung anomaly, nakakaroon po tayo ng anomalous cooling. So, ano po ba ang ibig sabihin nito? So, ito po yung ating uh, Nino 3.4 region. So, ito po yung sea surface temperature natin for the past 12 weeks. So, ano na po ba ang ating uh, recent value po ng ating oscillation Nino index kung saan ito po ay one of the indicators kung meron po ba tayong El Nino or La Nina phenomenon. So, ito na po, negative 0.8. Ito pong Nino 3.4. So, uh, alam na alam po natin na kapag ganyan po may cooling, so meron po tayong La Nina event. At ito pong ating uh, sea surface temperature anomaly sa Nino 3.4 region. Kung makikita po natin yung ating threshold for El Nino na in the past uh, month, eh, bumababa na po siya, nag-neutral and then, uh, yun nga po yung pinakita natin sa animation since September up to this period po, nandun po tayo sa ating La Nina threshold. Later po, mas malalaman po natin yung update sa amin po nga climate outlook. And so, ito po ang ating uh, pag-asa and solar system. We have issued La Nina advisory number one uh, last December 4, 2017. Okay, so we, we have uh, up, uh, uploaded this po sa aming website. We have this one na pinamimigay po natin sa ating mga stakeholders through email and fax. And of course, we have this simplified para po mas madaling uh, maintindihan po yung ating mga advisory. Okay, so ano naman po yung mga weather systems na naka sa atin the whole month of uh, November until kahapon po na December 12. Of course, we have the low pressure areas kung saan Ito naman po mga low pressures na to, nagdudulot po sa atin ng mga pag-ulan and eventually yung iba po nagiging tropical cyclone. Meron po rin tayong ridge of high pressure area. And then tail end of cold front, napaka sikat po nitong tail end of cold front na nagbibigay po ng mga pag-ulan. And then ito pong severe thunderstorms that also causes uh, flash floodings po sa ibang mga areas. And then uh, intertropical convergence zone. And of course, the north is monsoon, so amihan season po tayo. And of course, the occurrence of tropical cyclones na nakaapat po tayo since November. So we have uh, si Ramil, si Salome, si Tino, and si Orduha. Na ongoing pa po siya ngayon, kaya hindi pa, wala pa po siyang ending date. Kahapon lang po siya nag-start December 12. Okay, so very familiar tayo sa aming rainfall maps. Ito po, color-coded. Um, so less than 40, way below normal, that is color red. And then 41 to 80%, um, the red is way below normal and the yellow one is below normal. And then 81 to 120, near normal. And then blue po is uh, above normal. So yan po yung aming mapa, ganyan po natin siya ini-interpret. And of course, yung percent of normal po namin is based on the forecast rainfall over the normal rainfall times 100%. So yung normal rainfall po is uh, 30 years period. Okay, so let's assess the November uh, 2017 rainfall. So ano po ba ang makikita natin dito sa ating mapa? So present po ang mga kulay. Although uh, generally po, makikita po natin na uh, um, most parts of uh, Luzon and um, Mindanao naka-experience po ng near normal to, way ab uh, to above normal rainfall condition. And uh, yung Visayas areas naman po, uh, below normal rainfall condition. And then for December 1 to 11, kung sasabihin niyo po, bakit yung December 12 hindi pa nasali? Kasi po, today pa po namin makukuha yung complete list ng data ng kahapon po. So hanggang December 1 to 11 lang po ito. Kung hapon po yung forum natin, updated po itong mapa namin. Okay, so dapat 
dinner naman ang ano, no? isasagutin ng World Food Program. <laughs> Di ba, Miss Joanne? Okay. Okay po. So, makikita natin. Wow. Parang Pasko na rin po, no? So, marami pa po tayong mga pula. Ibig sabihin po, generally, most parts of the country, eh, way below normal. Baka po sakaling kung makikita natin dito, kung tatahakin po ni Orduha, ang lugar na ito, ayan, baka po mag uh, above normal rainfall condition pa tayo. So, and then dito po, uh, some patches po ng Mindanao, ito naman po yung due to mga severe thunderstorms po nila. Okay, so that's our rainfall assessment. So, actual temperature po for November. So, kung makikita po natin, maximum temperature um, is still, uh, sasabihin po natin, uh, slightly warmer po yung ating uh, nararamdamang temperatura. Ito po, ito po yung mga minimum uh, temperature, yung sa bandang uh, madaling araw, kung saan uh, mas warmer pa rin po yung ating temperature. Marami po tayong mga nagre-red red dyan. And then, Uh, getting the mean temperature, so makikita po natin na talagang slightly warmer po tayo. So hindi pa po natin gaanong ramdamin nung November yung ating amihan. And then uh, looking at it at sa graph uh, format, so ito po mas madaling makita. Kita nyo po yung uh, anomaly sa maximum temperature, mas marami po tayong mga nag increasing temperature as compared dun po sa mga decreasing temperature. So, kung minimum naman po, mas marami pa po. Oh. Maabot pa ng 2.8 sa iba, dagupan, ganyan po yung ating uh, trending ng ating uh, minimum temperature. And then for the mean temperature, so getting the average of it, so makikita po natin na talagang slightly warmer po tayo uh, compared to our uh, normal temperature. Okay, at uh, meron pong nakasurpass ng isang... Uh, Uh, extreme record po. So, yung Katabado Station po, na-observe po siya ng uh, 36.7 nung November 3. Uh, Na-exceed niya po yung kanyang extreme nung uh, November 2, 1987 na uh, 35.2. So, dito po yung Katabato na medyo mainit po. Parang mas napainit pa siya ng mga pangyayari sa ano, Marawi, no? <laughs> Baka may kinalaman. <laughs> so, yun po. Kasi ano po ito, mga valley. So, mas uh, mainit po ang temperature dyan. Okay, for uh, December 1 to 11, this is available po sa website. Ina-update po yan every day. Uh, so, hindi pa naman po natin masasabi na nasosurpass na, na yung mga ibang extreme uh, record. So, so far po for this month ng up to uh, nung December 11, so highest po uh, sa Cotabato again, nung December 3, 36.2, kung saan ang kanya pong uh, 35.5, so mainit po mas uh, mas mainit po siya ngayon baka po talaga may kinalaman yung mga insurgency problem joke lang po okay sa lowest naman po Baguio City 14.1 hindi pa po na surpass yung kanyang 9.2 so masarap pa po nga pumunta sa Baguio for Metro Manila highest po natin 33.9 for this uh, month at uh, sa lowest naman po 23.5 so mas malamig pa po talaga yung ating uh, recorded na temperature And uh, of course, we have the historical record for this month. And then, uh, actual rainfalls for uh, November associated with tropical cyclone. Ito pong three tropical cyclone na duman. So, yun pong umatend ng forum namin nung last month. Nakita na po natin to. So, just for the recap po, uh, lahat po sila nag-landfall. Um, uh, so, pag November po, ito po yung usual track natin. So, kung mamapansin nyo po, oops, ito siya, most likely ito. Ito po, ganon. So, hindi naman po sila lumihi sa katotohanan. Ano po? So, nag-behave naman po. Si Tropical sa uh, si, ano po, si Salome, siya po yung nag-cause ng uh, severe flooding sa uh, Mimaropa, Calabarzon, Region 3, including Metro Manila. And uh, dahil po dyan, nagkaroon po ng mga cancellation of classes, kung maaalala nyo po. So, ito po yung picture niya sa Albay. So, meron, tinan niyo po, grabe yung flooding niya at saka yung uh, nangyari po sa karagatan. And uh, ito naman po yung gumuho na sa may pader po ng uh, labor hospital sa Pituasan, dito lang po sa Quezon City. So, yan po, maaring dahil po sa continuous uh, heavy rainfall. And uh, kung napansin niyo po, nitong December, mga first week, so 
nag uh, meron po tayong amihan so medyo may mga kalakasan po yung pag-ulan so nag karon naman po ng heavy rainfall dito po sa Balibago, Santa Rosa, Laguna. And I think mag magdamag din po tayong inulan that uh, time dito po sa Manila. Okay, so nabanggit po kanina ni Obet ang ating uh, binabantay ang tropical depression na si Urduha. So si Urduha po ay aming na-invite yata sa aming Christmas party. Sakto po ang landfall niya sa December 15. So kung gusto niyo pong makiparty party, okay po. Uh, so medyo babantayan po natin tong ating uh, inaabata na bagyo. At yung sinasabi din po ni Obet na isa pang papasok na bagyo, so ano po ang magiging pangalan niya? So siya po si Vinta. So for TC verification, eto po makikita natin, nasa last month po tayo ng um, December, ay ng uh, 2017. And lagpas na po tayo sa kota. So naka 21 na po tayo. So pag pumasok pa po si Vinta, 22 na po tayo. No? Sobra-sobra na na po tayo sa passing grade. So, sana naman po, hindi po maging destructive itong mga huling uh, bagyo po na ito. Para naman po, merry ang ating Christmas. Okay, so ayan lang po yung average tropical cyclone frequency natin. And then, uh, eto po, um, as requested, yung ating po mga rainfall uh, validation. Um, okay po, so ito po yung aming forecast for November. And then, ito po yung actual. So, malapit po, no? O, oh, diba? Tama daw po kami, sabi ni Rosie. <laughs> so, kayo na po, be the judge kung ano po ba ang ating um, percentage. So, most likely, <laughs> so near normal. <laughs> so, meron pong katotohanan yung aming mga fino forecast, di po ba? And, uh, syempre po, since we are using uh, models, at least po, uh, nahihit natin yung ating mga fino forecast po na ating uh, rainfall. Okay, for temperature validation, so ginagawa po namin yung aming forecast temperature per area po, uh, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, ma mountainous and lowland. And uh, so ito po yung ating actual temperature. So since it is range po at hindi naman po ganun ka nagbabary yung ating temperature uh, monthly, so makikita naman po natin na ang aming forecast po ay uh, near average. Uh, so to tumatama po tayo since it is naka-range. Lagi naman po tayong uh, sasabihin nyo, lagi naman tayong slightly warmer kasi yun po talaga yung ating nakikita ng uh, trend ngayon ng temperature. Okay, so worldwide, tingnan naman po natin ano po ba nangyayari sa ating labas ng Pilipinas. So travel po muna tayo. Let's go to California. Okay, so yung mga walang visa, eto po, updated po tayo ngayon. So, April 30 pa po, nag-start ang wildfire sa kanila. Ito po ay dahil sa matinding uh, summer noong panahon na yon. So, dahil po kapag sobrang init, so very dry po ang kanilang kagubatan. So, madali pong mag-ignite ang mga tuyong dahon. And of course, yun pong wind, it add to the uh, further na pag uh, escalate po ng ating mga wildfire. So, September 2, so April 30, pero ngayon po mas siya na new news kasi mas alarming na po yung kanyang nangyayaring uh, wildfire. So nakikita nyo naman po na uh, since April 30, they were doing their best para po ma-stop. Ma Pero syempre, talagang umabot na po siya ngayon sa mga residential areas, yung wildfire nila. And uh, kung titingnan po natin yung... So, kung titingnan po natin yung area nila, ito po yung California. So ito na po yung uh, severely damaged ng wildfire ayaw. So, yun po yung uh, mahigit 200,000 hectares na po. And uh, ito rin po, news po yan. Yung mga kabayo, yung tumatakbo yan. Eh. Ayaw din tumakbo ng kabayo. So, yun po. So, nagkakaroon na po sila ng mga ginagawang operation para po through mga sa airplane para po ma-stop po talaga yung, yung fire nila. Pero still no avail. So, yun po, ang ginagawa na lang po nila is nag evacuate po sila. Yung pinapa-evacuate na po talaga yung mga tao dun sa residential area. And then, of, kung meron pong wildfire sa California, punta po tayo sa Hawaii kasi medyo mainit sa... <laughs> punta po tayo sa Hawaii. Okay, meron naman pong uh, snowing sa Hawaii, pero ito naman po ay... Uh, nakakala naman po talaga sila. Ang medyo alarming lang po kasi is sobra na po yung nangyayaring storm yung snowing po sa kanila. Kaya po yung kanilang, uh, eto po, yung mga tumitingin dito, na yung sa peak nila, yun pong kanilang uh, uh, Mauna Kia na mountain ay uh, sobra pong covered. 
Kaya po, medyo alarming na din. At kinoclose na po nila yung kanila mga tourist destination because of this. Na masyadong marami ang uh, snowstorm. Okay. So, for the summary, oh, it's summary already. So, yun po, and so alert, uh, La Nina Advisory number one po tayo. So, expected po natin, this January, we'll be issuing a uh, Number two, uh, La Nina Advisory. And then three tropical cyclones po nag-enter ng PAR and meron po tayong binabantayan ngayon na si Urduha and uh, always stay tuned po sa aming mga weather updates. And then for the rainfall ng November 2017, so generally po, ang uh, Luzon at uh, Mindanao ay uh, naka-experience po ng uh, above normal rainfall condition whereas sa Visayas naman po and sa Buanga Peninsula, ay naka-experience po ng below normal rainfall conditions. For um, December, generally way below normal naman po, ang siyempre dahil nasa kalagitnaan pa lang po tayo in um, the whole country. And then for the temperature, uh, November and December, generally um, slightly warmer po tayo. So with that, maraming salamat po. And uh, yun po, maraming salamat. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bell, for uh, showing us. Ay, sa pag-ano pala, sa pag-update ng aming presentation, meron na mukha si, yung sa climate review, si Ella, nandun. At saka for, ano, dinala mo kami sa California <laughs> at sa Hawaii. So now for, yung pinakahihintay natin, for the fearless forecast, <laughs> fearless. Uh, we'd like to call Miss Annalisa Solis, our officer in charge for the climate outlook for January to June. Maraming salamat, Rusi. Maraming salamat po sa ating lahat. Magandang umaga sa ating lahat. At Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Ano po? So, outlook for January to June. Sana masaya yung ating Pasko. Kaya lang yung ating mga ibang kababayan na posibleng maapektuhan ng mga bagyo ay ayun. So, and so updates and outlook, climate outlook from January to June in terms of rainfall, temperature, dry day, PC frequency. And then may nakikita po tayong bagong product natin, experimental, yung temperature extreme. So, mamaya po ipapakita natin. So, and then potential impacts of La Nina and then the summary. So, pinakita na po natin kanina yung sea surface temperature anomaly, yung nangyayari o yung kaganapang paglamig ng temperatura ng ibabaw ng dagat sa Central at Eastern Equatorial Pacific. Kung babalikan po natin yung last forum natin, yung extension po, nag-extend na rin dito yung unusual cooling in the Central at Equatorial Pacific. Pero nakita po natin in terms of SST anomaly, mas tumaas po yung, yung SST cooling niya. Meron siyang as high as minus 1.5 yung cooling niya. But still, uh, kung isusuma po natin, still at weak La Nina level. Kasi i-average po natin yung cooling nito sa C ng sea surface temperature anomaly dito po sa Central at Eastern Equatorial Pacific. So, a typical La Nina condition. So, dilaw up. And then, base po dun sa lahat ng mga international prediction centers na tinotingnan at monitor natin, so from IRI, USA, La Nina conditions are predicted to continue. So kung babalikan po natin as early as November, so nagkaroon na po sila ng La Nina advisory. Uh, una po sila nag-issue ng La Nina watch as early as September. And then tayo po nag-follow as early as October po. Dahil meron po tayong sinusunod na sariling threshold value, hindi po tayo pero nagdi-debate tayo ng konti dun sa CPC, IRI, NOAA na La Nina and El Nino threshold in terms of probability. And then yung ENSO alert niya po ay La Nina advisory. And then dito po sa BOM, Australia, na kung saan medyo mas mataas po ang threshold value niya, minus 0.8 or negative 0.8 degree centigrade na sea surface temperature anomaly sa Nino region. So, La Nina established in Tropical Pacific and then yung status po nila ng ENSO alert ay La Nina advisory na din po. So, medyo nauna tayo sa kanila ng mga isang araw. Okay, opo. And then, climate model suggests this La Nina will be weak and short-lived, persisting until early southern autumn. So, yung early southern autumn po ay March, April, May 2018. 
Sa Tokyo Climate Center from Japan naman po, so ang binabantayan nila ay yung Nino Tree Regions. So sinabi na rin po nila na La Nina. It is considered that La Nina conditions are present in the Equatorial Pacific and likely that La Nina conditions will persist March, April, May, so around 60%. Then that ends, so neutral conditions will return, so around 40%. So nandito na rin po sila sa La Nina threshold, although hindi sila nag issue officially ng alert system status having of La Nina advisory. Dito po sa APEC Climate Center sa Korea, prevailing ends of pace is expected to be negative. So hindi rin po nila sinasabi directly na La Nina is present in the tropical Pacific, pero eto rin po yung sinasabi nila na La Nina condition is present. So usually po kasi ganito yung statement nila. And then strongly enhanced probability for above normal precipitation is predicted for the off equatorial North Pacific, so kasama po yung Pilipinas doon. Enhanced probability for above normal precipitation for Arctic and Southern Philippine Sea, so kasama po tayo doon. Ito naman po sa WMO, so kasi po uh, quarterly po sila nag-update. So still October 5 pa rin po yung latest update nila. So at still at week La Nina conditions might develop and then weekend into end. So, so ibig sabihin week short live La Nina pa rin po yung general statement ng WMO. So based po dun sa nasurvey natin sa mga international prediction and global producing centers, so, Pagasa came up with a general statement, weak La Nina is present in the tropical Pacific, may not last beyond March 2018, but varying impacts occur. Hindi na siya may occur dahil talaga po na-experience na natin itong mga precursory at saka po uh, impacts po ng weak La Nina condition. So, nakita po natin last November, yung mga tropical cyclone development natin po, bago siya maging ganap na bagyo, eh, nagla-landfall siya malapit na po sa atin kalupaan bago siya maging de ma-develop na isang bagyo. So, a typical La Nina precursory signs po yon na malapit po yung tropical cyclone genesis within our Philippine Sea. Kaya usually po, nagla-landfall siya and rain-bearing rain -bearing ang ating mga bagyo. And then, so, ito naman po yung atmospheric indicator since ang El Nino or La Nina is ocean atmosphere uh, interaction. So, ito naman po yung atmospheric indicator. Kanina, yung SST ay yung oceanic indicator. So, yung 30-day oscillation index po is at 11.4. Uh, since December 10 or as of December 10. So meaning a typical uh, La, Nina, uh, uh, La Nina condition or La Nina reaction dun sa ating oceanic indicator dito po sa nangyayari sa ating atmosphere. And then, so yung kanila pong sustained positive values of SOI above 7, so La Nina, below 7, El Nino. So makikita po natin, CISO indicator yung El Nino at La Nina in terms of Southern Oscillation Index at saka sea surface temperature anomaly. Kapag negative, SST, tapos positive SOI, La Nina condition po yun. So CISO siya yun. Kaya yun po yung indicator na typical La Nina. So, uh, as of November 20 pa rin po, dahil medyo napaaga ang ating uh, forum, ano, usually po kasi every third Wednesday of each month. So, talaga pong just in time for the updates ng mga international prediction centers natin. So, hindi pa lumalabas yung early December ng CPC and IRI. So, still nandito pa rin po na increasing probability of having La Nina condition around 60% until January, February, March 2018. Pero may Meron pong mga ibang mga model updates na nagsasabi na pwedeng it may last beyond March, April, May 2018. So mamaya ipapakita po natin based dun po sa may mga latest runs na mga model. So ibig sabihin po, baka itong sinasabi nating week short-lived La Nina, may mga ibang model po na nagsasabi ngayon na baka magtuloy-tuloy pa. Although hinihintay pa rin po natin yung updates ng lahat ng mga majority of models na posibleng marilis po siya before Friday. Ayun. So, sinusulatan, ini-email na nga po namin ng mga tiga CPC, mga friends natin yan. Kaya lang, talaga pong binubuo pa nila yung probabilistic rain po, uh, and so forecast nila. And then, prediction suggests that SSTA has the greatest chance for being in the week La Nina, October, November, December, and then JFM kasi po, eto pa rin yung mid-November update natin. So, iintayin natin yung early October uh, update. So, pakiabangan na rin po sa website ng Pagasa. 
Ah, uh, ito pa rin po. So based on NMME, so ito po yung mga participating models being used in pag-assess consensus forecast. So mostly eight out of these models, yung po yung ginagamit natin as predictor. So whatever SST is predicted with those models, yung po yung ginagamit natin as predictor, ano yung mga likely impact ng, ng changes in SST anomaly at the Nino regions, yun po yung ating pang forecast in terms of rainfall natin. So ito po yung sinasabi nating latest, may latest update sa NCEP CFS. So sinasabi po niya, favors La Nina into Northern Hemisphere summer. So pag sinabi pong summer 2018, around June, July, August uh, season, makikita po natin na meron po on the average still at La Nina thresholds ang pinoforecast ng CFS na, na model. Ito po yung latest runs. So ito pa lang po yung model na may latest runs as of yesterday, uh, noong 11. So may nakikita tayo na may possibility na mag-continue until June, July, August, it's still at La Nina threshold. Ayun, so yun po yung monitor natin. So, La Nina advisory, first advisory po na issued on December 1st, so week shortly La Nina is present in the tropical Pacific based on recent condition. So, alam na po natin to yung back-to-back -back La Nina. So, na-present na rin po natin yan. So, hindi po unusual ang pagkakaroon ng back-to-back -back La Nina. In fact, meron po tayo mga five cases since 1950 up to 2017. Weather systems that might affect the country during the period from January to June. So, almost lahat po itong uh, weather systems na ito ay rain-bearing weather system except for ridges of high-pressure area na posibili pong makaranas o maapektuhan tayo during uh, sa next quarter po ng 2018, first quarter ng 2018 up to second quarter during the forecast period na kung saan makaka-experience tayo ng medyo mas mainit na temperatura kapag itong ridges of high-pressure area ang makaka-apekto sa atin. Pero most of these weather systems are rain-bearing weather system, makakapagpaulan po. So about our rainfall map, so in terms of uh, percent normal, so pula, dilaw, uh, green, tsaka above normal, greater than 120%. Ito po ang fearless forecast natin for the month of January. So this is the normal rainfall distribution during the months of January based from 1981 to 2010 or 30-year period. Ito po yung forecast rainfall natin in terms of millimeters of rain and then percent normal po for the month of January. So makikita po natin generally near to above normal rainfall conditions might be experienced uh, over most parts of the country except for some patches of below normal rainfall dito po sa western areas ng Luzon. So around 9 provinces might experience below normal, 19 provinces near normal, and then above normal, 51 provinces, mostly from the Visayas and Mindanao. So, nakita po natin, medyo ito yung mga likely impacts po nitong existing La Nina natin. For February 2018, ito po yung normal rainfall. Still, yung eastern section po ang medyo mas maulan, including ito po sa eastern Mindanao part ng Surigao and so, uh, uh, hinatuan, so dito po sa so Encaraga region. Ito po yung actua, uh, forecast rainfall in terms of millimeters of rain and then percent normal. Still generally near to above normal. So makikita po natin yung mostly above normal, ang concentration niya ay western Visayas and most parts of Mindanao. And then meron din po tayong patches of below normal dito sa may Ilocos area. So in general, so isang area, way below normal. Below normal, around three provinces. Near normal, 20, and then yung above normal, mostly din po from Visayas and Mindanao. So parang medyo maulan po talaga ang Visayas and Mindanao. So ito po ay based dun sa previous updates, uh, latest updates natin based on initial condition ng December. So yung pong pinorikas natin last November ay based on November initial condition. So nakikita po natin na merong mga consistency among the models na ganun talaga po yung posibleng maging likely impact dahil towards La Nina condition po tayo. 81 to 2010, ito pa rin po yung normal rainfall distribution natin, forecast rainfall. So generally, meron pa rin po tayong near to above normal rainfall condition. Kaya lang po, uh, normally, mas madami po ang ulan ang Visayas at Mindanao kapag December, January, February. So in, sa pagdating ng March, medyo kumukunti yung ulan niya pero still above sa ro, uh, rainfall values niya. You know, above the normal rainfall values dito po sa may Visayas at Mindanao. And then 
typically dry po dito sa may part po ng Western Luzon. So mostly about 40 provinces might experience above normal rainfall condition during March. So kung titingnan po natin, ito ay summer dry season natin. So meron pa rin po mga dry season areas, typically dito sa mga areas under type 1 climate sa western section ng Luzon. But still medyo maulin, maulan po dito sa may Visayas at Mindanao. Pagdating po ng April, so ito po yung typical the dry season natin. Uh, medyo below normal po sa may uh, parts, most parts of Luzon and then generally near normal rainfall condition. So kung titingnan po natin, uh, January, February, March, meron po tayong mga impending uh, impact po ng La Nina. Pero nakita natin sa April, although uh, kung matutuli, kung up to January, February, March yung, yung La Nina, nakikita po natin na generally near normal rainfall condition pa rin Visayas at Mindanao. And then, meron po tayong below normal dito sa may uh, Luzon. Pero pagdating po ng May, nakita natin parang medyo tuloy-tuloy na may mga pag-uulan pa rin po pagdating ng Mayo. So, meaning nakikita po natin na generally near to above normal rainfall, mga areas under type 1 climate pagdating ng May, which coincided with the southwest monsoon at saka po ng usually ay onset ng ating rainy season. So, Fearless forecast pa lang, nakikita po natin na mukhang early or normal onset ng rainy season pagdating ng May 2018 dahil meron po siyang uh, remnants nung previous La Nina impact. And then, pwede po magtuloy-tuloy na marami tayong pag-ulan pagdating ng May 2018 that coincided with the onset of our southwest monsoon and rainy season. So around 63 provinces above normal, mostly Luzon, Visayas and Northern Mindanao. Pagdating po ng June, so normal siya, generally near normal rainfall condition and then meron pong below normal rainfall condition dito po sa may part po ng Northern Luzon. Pero kahit po below normal siya, meron pa rin po siyang mga pag-uulan around 100 to 200 millimeters. So ibig sabihin po, kahit below normal siya, eh, madami pa rin po yung rainfall distribution dahil normally, marami po siyang ulan during that period dahil ito po ay southwest monsoon activity natin. So in general po, near to above normal rainfall condition during the forecast period except for some patches of below to way below normal rainfall over Luzon area. So except po nung may onset na rainy season. So in terms of probability, so gaano ba tayo ka-sure ko above normal or below normal yung may experience natin during that forecast period? So this is to address uncertainty. Kaysa sabihin lang natin na below normal in January, pwede po natin masabi na what is the probability na magiging below normal or above normal ka in January in terms of probability. So nakita po natin, pag nakakita tayo ng mas darker ang blue shades dyan, ibig sabihin po, mas mataas ang probability of having above normal rainfall condition dun sa mga na-forecast natin na above normal in terms of percent normal. So kapag lighter ang shades, dito po, so around 50 to 55 percent, ibig sabihin po, meron kang mga around 45 percent uncertainty na hindi ka makakareceive ng above or near normal rainfall condition pagdating ng April. So meaning po, mas lighter ang shades na makita niyan, whether blue, red, or green, Ibig sabihin po, mababa ang skill or mababa po ang chance or mas uncertain tayo sa forecast natin na ginagawa. Pero kung titingnan po natin, highly certain tayo during January, February, at May na ang probability natin ng pagkakaroon ng above normal ay mas highly certain. Iyon po yung pinapakita dito. But still, pag sinabi nating 60, 70%, meron tayong mga 30 to 40% uncertainty whether siya ay pwedeng maging below normal or pwede siyang maging near normal kung above normal ang ating pinoforecast. So, ito po yung tabular presentation in terms of percent normal per province. So, generally po, dito ay Luzon area, dito ay Visayas and Mindanao. Makita po natin during the forecast period from January to June, eh mostly green to blue lang yung kulay niya. So, generally near to above normal rainfall period, uh, forecast po from, for Visayas and Mindanao. And then may mga patches po ng below to way below normal over Luzon area during the forecast period. So, ito po yung buong Luzon, ito Visayas at Mindanao. So, green to blue, pero ito, sari-sari yung kulay niya. Ano po? 
Okay. So, uh, in general, so yung provinces that will likely affect be, uh, uh, be below, below, near, and above. So, ito po yung general summary niya from January to June. So, mostly nagpo-fall or nag-range siya from near normal to above normal rainfall condition during the forecast period. In terms of millimeters of rain, so kailangan gaano ba kadami talaga or rainfall amount yung yung papatak na ulan sa akin in terms dun sa rain po, uh, forecast ng pag-aasa. So ito po yan per province din and then may rains din from January to June. Sa mga dams natin, watersheds, dams and lakes for Angat, Lake Buhi, Lake Lanao, Magat, Malinaw, Pantabangan and San Roque. So generally po, uh, above normal rainfall condition during May, near to above from January to March. So meron lang po tayong mga below normal rainfall condition forecasted over selected watershed natin dito po sa may Angat, Magat, and Pantabangan pagdating po ng April. But then the rest general, near to above normal rainfall conditions po. Sa ating mga rain stations over selected dam areas, so, makita po natin, near to above normal rainfall condition, except pagdating po ng April, so ito yung mga below normal rainfall condition dito po sa mga selected dam areas natin. So, medyo uh, normal to above normal. So, in general po ay near normal yung mga patak ng ulan dito sa may selected dam areas natin. So, Luzon and Mindanao River Basins. So, makita po natin yung Mindanao River Basins natin might experience near to above normal rainfall condition from January to March, including April to June, so generally near normal sa Mindanao. Sa may Luzon area, so meron po tayong mga patches ng below normal rainfall condition during the forecast period and even during the dry summer months ng April and then papasok ang tag-ulan normalize and above normal rainfall po yung may experience ng ating mga selected river basins along Luzon area. In terms of temperature, so nararamdaman na po ba natin yung lamig ng ating hangin ngayon? Uh, amihan. So, meron na rin po tayong mga nakikita, uh, pinakamababang temperature po na na-record natin as of December is 14.1 sa may Baguio City. So, 14.1 pa lang po yung na-record ngayon pero hindi pa rin po siya yung pinaka-extremes dahil ang pinakamalamig pong temperatura na nararamdaman natin kapag sa Baguio during this season, season ay around 6.4, 6.8 or 7.2 during December. So yung 6 point something ay kapag January. Ano po? So mas malamig po tayo kapag January kumpara sa December. So generally, is slightly warmer than average so most parts po na Luzon area. Although may nakikita po tayong mga surge of uh, northeast monsoon dito na medyo slightly or cooler than average po dito sa northern tip ng Luzon from January, February. And then makita po natin during the dry period or summer natin, eh medyo sa may central Luzon po, eh medyo mas mainit po kaysa karaniwan ng ating temperatura. So on the average po yan. Forecast for Luzon stations, Visayas, and Mindanao for the month of January. So makikita po natin, in terms of anomaly, yung minimum or nighttime temperature natin ay eh medyo mas mainit. Pero ang forecast po natin, in terms of daytime temperature, medyo yun yung pong mas malalamig ang temperatura natin. So kahit slightly warmer than average ang forecast natin for the month of January, kung titingnan po natin yung per station, makikita po natin in terms of maximum or daytime temperature, eh medyo malalamig po ang ating mga daytime uh, araw natin for January. Pagdating po ng February, so makita pa rin po natin yung minimum temperature ay slightly mainit po yung nighttime temperature natin. And then medyo malamig po naman yung ating daytime temperature. So usually po ay kapag hindi la niya under normal rainfall, uh, under normal condition, medyo mas malalamig po or medyo mas mabababa ang ating minimum temperature or nighttime temperature. So siguro po may kinalaman din yun dun sa mga strong convective activity malapit sa dagat natin kapag merong laninya. Kaya ganito po yung nangyayari na yung nighttime temperature medyo mas mainit pero yung daytime temperature natin eh medyo malamig. Po, para po sa detailed eh, uh, MET 101 yung 
land and sea breezes. <laughs> Ayun, so titi, uh, uh, pag may kitanungan nga po kaya andyan si Ma'am Vic, ang ating eksperto sa mga land and sea breezes, may papaliwanag po na niyang mabuti yan. So in terms of um, temperature for March, so makita rin pa rin po natin. So generally, yung daytime temperature natin over Luzon and Visayas area, eh medyo mas mabababa kaysa normal in terms of anomaly. And then yung nighttime temperature, kaya talagang malakas ang konsumo ng ating air condition kapag gabi dahil medyo mainit po kapag gabi, ano, alinsangan. Ayun. Pagdating po ng April, so ito yung dry condition, season month natin. So makikita po natin na hindi masyado yung minimum temperature natin, pero medyo mas mainit po. Pero makita natin yung maximum temperature natin or daytime temperature ay medyo mababa. Pero in terms of mean, in general, ay meron pa rin pong mga lugar na mas maiinit ang temperatura, maka-experience din po tayo ng sobrang init at alinsangan dito po pagdating ng April. Mostly sa may Luzon area. May Ah, uh, ayon, mainit naman yung ating nighttime temperature and then pati po yung daytime temperature. Although may mga malalamig din po in terms of anomaly. Pagdating ng June, so medyo maiinit po in general ang ating uh, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao area in terms of mean temperature both daytime and nighttime temperature ay eh medyo maiinit po during the months of June forecast. Extreme yung range natin. So, forecast po ni Miss Rosie. <laughs> ni Miss Rosie talaga. So, sa mountainous areas po, we could get as low as 8.9 degrees. So, surge lang po naman ito. Hindi siya ito yung average sa uh, January 2018. We could get as low as 8.9. Although na forecast natin ito, special interpolated siya. Hindi naman po necessarily sa station natin sa Baguio makukuha ito. So, baka maaaring wala tayong record dun sa pinakamatataas pa at mas malalamig na lugar sa, sa Benguet or car area but still we could get as low as 8.9 and then ito po yung maximum rain, uh, temperature uh, we could get as high as 39.1 during the forecast period so ito po yung nakikita nating medyo or 39.7 sa may part po ng Luzon so mostly sa Aparito Gigaraw area pagdating po ng May so update po natin yan baka magkaroon ng 40 <laughs> okay so, ito po yung sinasabi nating exceedance probability. Ito po yung bagong uh, forecast product natin na uh, i-experimental po natin during December, January, February. i forecast natin yung probability of having lowest or coolest temperature ilang araw at ilang porsyento na ma-exceed natin yung tinatawag na certain threshold value. So, uh, pag June, July, oh, March, April, May, so yung exceedance probability naman po of maximum temperature ang ipipresent natin. So experimental extreme temperature forecast natin sa mga highlands po natin sa Baguio at Malaybalay. So dito po, uh, kinuha natin yung threshold value of 13.9 degrees centigrade sa Baguio. Ito po yung mean ng minimum temperature observed uh, from 1981 to 2010 data, kaya nag-come up tayo ng 13.9 na threshold values. Ngayon, tinitingnan natin, ano ang probability na magkakaroon ng ilang araw, makaka-experience tayo ng 13.9 degrees centigrade o mas mababa pa pag December. So dito po, ina-explain natin na exceedance probabilities indicate the probability that the value will be exceeded, say, for 13.9 degrees centigrade. And these probabilities are calculated during the, uh, using the climatological data, long record po. So dito po, nakikita natin na wala di yung araw, ano? Hindi natin na ilagay. Opo, oh. Kasi may days po dito. Uh, around four days. Four, four, four. Uh, eight days, okay. So dito po, makikita po natin na mga 70 to 75% probability that Baguio City might experience 13.9 degrees centigrade or below for 8 days. So, ibig sabihin po, pwedeng walong araw maka-experience ng 13.9 or mas mababa pa ang Baguio during the forecast period. So, yun po yung interpretation ng ating exceedance probability. So, for Malaybalay, for Mindanao area, makita po natin na mas mataas ang probability niya or more than 75% of probability to exceed, ah, to exceed, 
para mas mababa o maging less ang 19 degrees centigrade or mas malamig pa dito sa Malaybalay area for four days. Four days po dito sa Malaybalay. So yun po yung interpretation nitong experimental exceedance probability natin. So kung may katanungan lang po ay at ano lang po. That's for December. Pagdating po ng January, so nakita po natin na babago yung threshold value natin dahil ang ginagamit po natin ay January temperature. So pinapakita lang po natin dito na mas malalamig talaga during the months of January kung kaysa December dahil ang threshold value natin is around 12.9. So dito nakikita natin medyo around 45 to 50% lang po ang probability na makaka-experience ang bagyo ng less than 12.9 or 12.9 degrees centigrade yung lamig niya dito po for around 4 days. 4 days po. And then dito po sa Malay-Balay, so meron pong around, mas malaki ang probability niya around 75% probability or chances na ang Malay-Balay ay makaka-experience ng 17.8 degrees centigrade or mas mababa pa during the forecast period ng January dito sa Malay-Balay. So, ibig sabihin po, mas mataas ang probability mo na mas makaka-experience ka ng mas mababa sa 17.8 sa Malay-Balay. Sa Baguio naman, maliit lang yung chance mo na maka-exceed ka ng 12.9 degrees centigrade. Pagdating po ng February, so mas medyo mas mataas yung threshold natin, 13.3, but then meron siyang ex, uh, probability of around 70 to 75 percent na maging 13.3 degrees centigrade ang temperature niya or mas mababa pa or mas malamig pa sa Baguio pagdating po ng March. Sa Malay-Balay, ganun din po mataas ang probability niya na magkaroon siya ng 17.5 degrees centigrade or mas mababa pa pagdating po ng March. So, ito po yung mga exceedance probability natin. So, experimental to for temperature, so tatry po natin sa rainfall. Pero mas challenging po yung rainfall. The probability exceedance na having halimbawa 100 millimeters of rain per day. So, yung mga extreme rainfall forecast po ay eh, yun po yung mas challenging sa atin. So for now, ito po yung posible nating uh, uh, experimental maging operation dahil tinitingnan po natin yung skill na ito. Okay. In terms of dry day forecast, so a day with less than or equal to 1 millimeters of rain, so yung pong mga brown shades dyan, so yung po yung mga area o may bilang na araw na mas marami ang araw na walang ulan. So, mas marami pong araw na may ulan, ito pong mga green to blue shades. So, mostly po yung eastern section ng ating bansa. Pero pag nakita po natin, during April, mas marami po tayong dry days. So, dito talaga yung typical na dry season natin. But then, may mga lugar pa rin po sa eastern Visayas at Mindanao during our dry period na meron pong mga around 11 to 15 days na meron siyang ulan. So, pagdating po ng May at June, mas madami na po yung mga araw na walang uh, may ulan kaysa po dun sa dry day. So makita po natin ay eh, nagko-coincide ito dun sa mga forecast nating below to way below normal rainfall condition during the forecast period in terms of dry day. So tinitingnan din po parang ito yung supporting uh, document or supporting forecast dun sa mga rainfall natin. So pwede po natin gamitin o mag-complement yung paggamit ng forecast ng rainfall at ng dry days natin. So, lalo na po sa mga post-drying or post-harvest activities ng ating agriculture sector. So, ito po yung tabular. May range siya, number of dry days from January to June. Ang haba ng presentation natin. Ano po? Kasi ganyan po kadami ang forecast products ng pag-asa. So, kapag na-improve na po yung website ng pag-asa, eh, makikita nyo na po ang lahat ng mga products na ito. Kasi nasa website po ito ng pag-asa, kaya lang medyo mga napakalalim o nakatago pa. Pero pag na-improve po natin yung website ng pag-asa, lahat po ng mga informasyon na ito ay eh, makikita nyo na ng madali. Kaya... Uh, mas maganda po na umaaten tayo ng forum dahil nakikita natin itong mga products natin na meron pala tayo ganito. So, January to June, so around 2 to 5 tropical cyclones during the forecast period from January to June. And ito po yung preferred tracks niya based on climatology, uh, on historical record from 1948 to 2016. So, around 2 to 5. So, yan po. 
usually po, kapag walang laninya, eh, mga zero or slim chance po ang nakalagay dyan. Pero may mga possibility na at least makaisa po tayo mga bagyo bawat buwan. So, in summary, yun, summary na. Weak laninya is present in the tropical Pacific. It is not expected to last beyond March 2018, but varying impacts occur, may occur. So for January, rainfall below normal rainfall over western Luzon, while generally near to above normal sa may eastern Luzon and most parts of Visayas and Mindanao. Pagdating po ng Feb 2018, so still generally near to above normal rainfall, pero po may mga below normal rainfall over Ilocos area. And then Visayas in Mindanao mostly po ay above normal rainfall condition. So dito natin nakikita yung likely impacts nitong La Nina condition. And then March 2018, below normal rainfall over western Luzon. Pero in general po, near to above normal rainfall sa eastern Luzon and most parts of Visayas at Mindanao. April, ayun, nahuli si alert system. Ano, La Nina advisory. Pagdating po ng April, Uh, meron pong mga below normal sa may parts ng Luzon area, so except western Luzon and then rest of the country will likely experience near normal rainfall condition. Pagdating po ng May, generally near to above normal rainfall. June, mostly near normal over most parts of the country, pero meron pong below normal rainfall sa may northern part ng Luzon pagdating ng June. So in general, near average to slightly warmer than average surface temperature, lalo na po yung ating nighttime temperature, pero medyo mas malamig po ang ating daytime temperature during the forecast period, but then cold surges may occur in December to February 2018. So malamig pa rin po. 2 to 5 thesis from January to June. Ayon. so... Imo-monitor po natin, closely monitoring ang gagawin po natin, not only in terms of La Nina condition or yung unusual cooling sa Pacific, pati na rin po yung mga day-to-day -day weather natin, lalo la na po meron tayong mga inaasahan na mga paparating na bagyo during Christmas time. And then yung outlook po natin, next forum po, tentatively scheduled on January 24, 2018. Ayun po. So, maraming salamat po. So, ito rin po yung opportunity na magpasalamat po sa World Food Program. So, asan po si Miss Joanne Odenya? So, siya po yung representative ng World Food Program. So, uh, ayaw niya po magsalita doon na lang doon siya sa back. Pero, nagpapasalamat po kami sa continued support ng World Food Program. So, yun po. And, eto rin po yung opportunity ko para pasalamatan ang ating mga kasama dito po sa Climate Monitoring and Prediction Section. So, Uh, taga-present lang po kami dito. Nagpipresent lang po ako dito. Pero lahat po ng mga pinipresent natin, mga mapa, chart, eh, magsitayo nga po yung tiga-claims. Uh, sasamantalahin ko na po dahil minsan lang uh, natin... <laughs> uh, so, sila po yung gumagawa talaga lahat ng ating mga pinipresent dito. So, taga-present lang po ako dito. So, sila po yung gumagawa nitong mga maps natin para maipresent natin itong mga ito. Kaya, sila din yung sisisinyo pag mali. Hindi, hindi naman po. So, inaano naman natin lahat. So, maraming maraming salamat po. So, hindi ko man sinasabi sa kanila palaging salamat, pero alam na nila yun. <laughs> Opo. Ayun, so, yun lang po. Maraming salamat din po sa inyo. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Miss Anna.